Warning, you are not watching Siskel and Ebert. You are now entering Wayne World. So then topical we'll back with another video. I'm Strange Wayne today. I have a movie review for the film Pinocchio. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio because there was already one this year. Which I have a review for that. I in the corner. But let's get down to brass tacks. I gave Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio a six wings out of ten. Why? 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 Because the stop motion animation was pretty damn good. I mean, you mix in the CGI and you have a fun, entertaining movie for your eyeballs, but. What's more important than that is the story. That's fair. And if I'm being completely honest, Ew. the story isn't bad at all. It's a different approach. It's a different take. It's more realistic. It's honestly more heart-wrenching. In the beginning, you get invested much quicker than you do in the Disney live-action one or even the animated one, in my personal opinion. So, starting out on the right foot. And then, the main character, the title card character, what you came to see, what you pay to see, what you got on Netflix to watch, Pinocchio comes to life. And that's where this movie starts to suck. Because Pinocchio, in the very beginning, is a spoiled brat. He's entitled. He's a cock-sucking, dog-dick-licking piece of shit. That annoying fucking piece of wood absolutely irritated the fuck out of me. God damn! And made this film so unenjoyable from the start with this little asshole fucking puppet that I lost interest all the way to the end of this movie. I did not give one fuck. Clearly! <laughs> no debating! Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is a little fucking shit and I do not like him. So when you have a story of this little shithead Pinocchio disrespectful ass motherfucker i grew up in the 90s dog you get <laughs> fucking smack talking back shit like that and this is wartime so that little fucker should have got hit too you keeping it real game with a toy he should have got a fucking you know that drunk of a father he got you should have gave him a fucking fist you know i got smacked with a hand the open palm you know that motherfucker just pow pop that motherfucker right in this fucking wood i'll hurt your hand though so you gotta find something else but nonetheless he's a disrespectful little asshole and i don't like him and I don't understand why Geppetto ends up liking him and loving him. And all these other people end up loving him at the end of this movie. It don't make no more fucking sense. Because I have such disdain for fucking Pinocchio that he's a fucking whiny little piece of shit. I don't want to go to school. Who gives a fuck? He said go to school, you go to school. You know what I'm saying? He's the only reason why you're living. Because he's a fucking poor... Not... Well, he is poor. But... He's a poor old man who lost his fucking son. And you don't have the fucking intelligence, empathy to sympathize with that. And I'm going to do better. And when you do, you're just like, I don't want to go to school today. I want to hang out with this fucking, uh, these fucking hoodlums and this fucking circus and fucking do my thing. Immediately, the fucking, uh, crickets like, but your father's like, yeah, don't, don't worry about him. Fucking prick. Fuck Pinocchio in this movie. So, you have a story where the whole point of the goddamn story is these two are broken away and they're coming to find one another because they love one another. They need one another. Talking about Geppetto and Pinocchio. And you post have this emotional ending, especially in this one, which is more emotional than the other two previous Pinocchio films from Disney. I haven't seen the uh, really shitty live action one because I love myself and my parents didn't show it to me because they love me as well. So I didn't see that one. So I only have those two to compare it with. So you supposed to have this heartwarming experience, this emotional tear quenching in because of all the emotions that these characters have gone through through this entire film. And you're supposed to get that at the end. But... You don't, in my opinion. I didn't. You know why? You gotta earn it! 
And because Pinocchio was such a fucking shithead in the beginning, I didn't care when he was sent off the boys' camp and had to go to war. I didn't care when he was eaten by this fucking monster well. I didn't care about all the times he died. I was happy when he died. I was hoping he would get shot in the face with a paintball gun. I was hoping he would stay in the well because I do not like Pinocchio. I don't like him one bit. And that's all I'm going to say about Pinocchio. I don't like him. And because of that, the story didn't have any investment. The story is very well written. The plot points and the overarching arc is great. But the main character I despise so much I couldn't enjoy the rest of the movie. Now, technically, like I said, Guillermo del Toro, when he does filmmaking, he does it fucking very, very well. He's one of the best. You're not wrong. And as a director, your job is to bring all this together to have your vision play out on screen. And the voice actors he picked for this film, terrific. They did an excellent job. You got a lot of the regular people that he's worked with before coming back on this. If you want to see it, I'm not Google. Go Google the search list, the cast list after this. They're fucking great, top to bottom. Their animators was like, hey, either I know this person is casting this or vice versa. But the animators creating this stop motion uh, figures to play on screen that you see on screen. Wonderful job. The voices match it 100% match. Incredible stuff. Again, well written, great story beats. The story being more realistic made it fresh and more palatable because it is a familiar story and it's a story we've seen made already this year. Most people probably grew up with this film as well or have seen it once or twice before in their life. So you take this familiar story, you change it up, you make it more like a traditional fairy tale s story and you have... Yeah, with the Taurus. Pinocchio, which is honestly, if Pinocchio was written less like a shithead, I would have enjoyed this film a lot more and probably would have, the investment would have been there for me to have the emotion for the end of the movie because I'm a big crier in movies. I am. I cried in The Fable Man. I would cry all the time. But a movie that had that emotion on the screen. That I felt like, hey, this is why he's doing this to set up these beats. To have this reaction of emotions at the end of his story. And it just wasn't there. And that sucks. That's right, I said it. Because I love movies and I love emotions. And I love showing my emotions while watching movies. It's what I love about directing. Making people feel something. It's a wonderful, beautiful thing. And this movie is didn't have it and it was definitely supposed to have it so because of that strange wing gave pinocchio from guillermo del toro six wings out of ten but i just thought about something while i was talking during this review the story of pinocchio and uh very similar to forrest gump a very innocent childlike figure goes on a great adventure just to come back to the person he loves I should have not watched this and watched Forrest Gump instead. Much better movie. Random. But tell Strange Wing down low in the comment section below. Thoughts and opinions. Scroll back up. Hit the like button. Share the video. And then what? Subscribe. One more thing. Here at Cinematopical, we're unfortunately poor. And this money you see on screen, that's CGI. That's not real money. Because again, we're poor. So if you want to click in the add eye in the corner... That video is monetized and we can make money off it, so please go watch it. And if you click an ad, we make more money. And if you really want to help, there's the thanks button right there below this video. It's not a game, it's a red